Conveniently settled in the hills of the historic Cumberland Gap area of southeastern Kentucky lies the small city of Barberville. Located just 33 miles north of the Cumberland Gap, Barberville was referred to as the town on the big bend of the Cumberland River by early settlers. Barberville is the home of many historic locations important to the history of Kentucky. When we think about our region, you know, a lot of times we're portrayed in the media as a poverty-ridden area, and, uh, and uh, Barberville and Knox County are old. Uh, everybody claims age, but the, Barberville is uh, the oldest town in the mountains of Kentucky. And being that, and being just a short distance from Cumberland Gap, early Kentucky history was made right here. From the beginning of this area all the way to today, uh, we make news through our history. In 1750, Thomas Walker, a distinguished physician and explorer from Virginia, selected a site about six miles southeast of the present-day Barberville, where he built the first European settler's house in Kentucky. Today, in its place, stands a replica of the cabin constructed by the explorer on a 12-acre tract of land, which serves as a state recreational park. Currently, the Dr. Thomas Walker State Historical Site offers educational tours and houses basketball courts, horseshoe pits, miniature golf, a gift shop, and picnic tables, making the area perfect for a family outing and educational experience. Just outside the city limits of Barberville lies the community of Flatlick. This area earned its name from the salty rock of its terrain, which drew wild game to the area. Migrating buffalo made their way through the mountains to graze the fields of Flatlick, consequently creating the trails known as Warrior's Path, Boone Trace, and the Wilderness Road. These three trails, which intersected in Flatlick, were traveled by the Shawnee and Cherokee Indians and Daniel Boone, who were in pursuit of the wild animals. Thus, Flatlick serves as the heart of American history. Daniel Boone, an American pioneer, is the most famous for his explorations and settlement of what is now known as Kentucky and opening the gateway for Western expansion. Barberville recently erected a statue in his honor. Daniel Boone came through here in 1775 and blazed the trail from Cumberland Gap to Boonesboro, and that allowed he made markings on trees, and that allowed people to have a straight shot and not get lost to get to Boonesboro. Hopefully, they wouldn't get killed by the Indians or bears or anything on their way, and uh, sometimes that did happen. But there was at least a trail blazed through here called the Boone Trace. Hi, I'm Andrew Johnston, and I'm here with Mr. Valentine, and I'll let him introduce himself. I'm Steve Valentine, Vice President of the Knox Historical Museum. Uh, Mr. Valentine, uh, can you explain the origins of the Daniel Boone Festival and its significance to this area? Well, I'll do the best I can. It was start, started in 1948 by Dr. Carl Bilal at Union College, him and his senior class. And it was started to teach the people and the kids uh, education about the history of, uh, of Barville, about the pioneers and how it was discovered and so forth. So it was started as an educational uh, deal in, in 1948. And Dr. Carl Malal, who started it, uh, contacted the Jerky Indians. We wanted the Indians to be here as part of the uh, Daniel Boone Festival uh, because of uh, the involvement with the Indians over the years. He found out that the Indians needed uh, cane to make their baskets in Cherokee, North Carolina. So he made a deal with two of the chiefs at that time to start coming to Barberville once a year for the Daniel Boone Festival and to sign a treaty with us called the Cane Treaty every year for them to come to Barberville, Knox County, and cut cane on the river to make their baskets out of. Union College's participation in the creation of the Daniel Boone Festival is not its only redeeming quality. Union was founded in 1879, making it the oldest college in the mountains. Union College and Barberville have a long-standing relationship which dates back to its founding. Union was established to create opportunities for the community and their families while helping the region thrive and prosper. Union still honors that pact today as its student body represents 23 states and over 9 countries along with working alongside the city of Barberville. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. So I just have a few questions for you about Union and the city of Barberville. 
Question number one. How does Union and the City of Barberville work together to improve this community? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we've had a long history of working together, sometimes better than other times. I think right now we're in a really good position working together um, on developing new um, interests for the community, maybe for the, uh, in conjunction with the college. We have um, established a position that is a special assistant to the president for external relations, and that person also serves as the Barberville Director of Tourism. So uh, her name is Denise Wayne Scott, and the idea is that anything that's good for Barberville tourism and to bring um, interest to Barberville is also good for the college. So that's how we're working uh, currently to develop those interests. Oh, that's really great to hear that you guys are working together to make this place a better place to live. Um, second question, mm -hmm. final question. Uh, how does Union um, affect the development of Barberville throughout history? How has it affected the development of this town? I, well, initially it affected the development by um, enabling students, um, children of the settlers and, and people in this area to um, go to school locally uh, and to go to school at all because there was a time when they had to, um, they were going to get an education even even a primary school, K through 12 kind of education, um, they had to go away. And so the citizens of Barberville really felt strongly that they needed an educational institution in this community. And that's how Union College came about. Um, they started with a normal school, which is the, the early grades. And then that went off into a separate entity, as you know. And, and we ended up being a, uh, a college. and. It's, it, we currently are the, um, I guess, the third largest employer in, in this area. Um, we currently still um, educate 80% Kentucky students, and the majority of that 80% comes from this region. Um, you can't throw a rock anywhere and not get a a teacher that we've educated in this community. So I think, um, and, and with our new social work program and nursing program, we continue to educate uh, individuals who go back into the community and do good work. Oh, that's really interesting. It's really fascinating. Thank you for your time. Thanks oh, for sharing welcome. with us. Thank you for asking. In an attempt to foster the relationship between Union and the community of Barberville, the college has taken over the annual Redbud Festival. Well, the Redbud Festival is truly a celebration of Appalachian culture. It's an event that celebrates the work of artisans and crafters. It also recognizes current challenges that are facing the region in terms of the fact that we're hosting a symposium on regional economic development and the importance of history and place this year. So it spans a very broad time frame. It reminds people of the importance of traditional activities and, you know, one example of that is the heritage living section that we have as a component of this festival, so, which shows us ways that people would have subsisted, subsisted in the past, but continue those practices even today. And it's also important to us in the sense that it can be uh, significant in terms of economic development. It's people to the region, it brings people to our campus, and it provides Again, artisan, crafters, different vendors, musicians, and other individuals the opportunity to earn income. So it's significant for that reason as well. The best way to look at this is to think of it as a partnership between the community and the college. Uh, a festival sort of emerged from a very grassroots community effort, and so we're just partnering to help it grow and expand. In the same fashion as the festival, the Knox County Historical Museum displays an extensive amount of culturally relevant artifacts. The museum prides itself on only collecting artifacts from the surrounding areas. Hi, I'm Andrew Johnston and I'm here with Mr. Mills and we are in the old Barberville room at the Historical Museum in Barberville and we are actually sitting in seats from the original Magic Theater. We're trying to picture Barberville's history. For example, I mentioned the Civil War battle. We have a room designated just for uh, wars that Knox Countyans and Barbervillians have filed in. Uh, we have a, a case that has uh, Civil War materials. 
a lot of these things are hard to come by. Recently, a lot of people have been donating, you know, long rifles and things of the pioneer period. So when we do a tour of the museum, uh, one of the first rooms we go in pertains to Dr. Thomas Walker in the building of the first house in Kentucky, just about five miles from here. And uh, we talk about the pioneer days of this area and Daniel Boone. And we have extensive arrowhead collections and things that have been collected in this area pertaining to our pioneer era. And then we step from that room into this room, which uh, uh, we have things pertaining to Barberville history itself. And we have the wheels from the last car. We have photos that depict it on the streets. Other things in the room, we have the early history of our large buildings uptown, our hotels, and we have a medical case with uh, uh, memorabilia from the doctors in the past, some of us remember, and some of them predate our time. We have uh, bottles from bottling plants, uh, medicine bottles with Barbersville cut in the glass. We have memorabilia from uh, John A. Black's bank, which was an early bank in Kentucky. You won't find uh, many banks with its currency that has Barberville, Kentucky right on the money. But we do have pictures and uh, as you say, we're, we're seated in the seats right out of the old Magic Theater. You know, the future of our area as coal dries up and all of the sources of income dry up, what's left for us to be proud of is our history and our heritage. And if you go back to the beginning, the original Wilderness Road and Boone Trace come right through this area and right through this town, the Wilderness Road. That, of course, brought Daniel Boone and the early settlers. So when you go back to the 1840s, most of the political brain thrust of southeast Kentucky originated here. It's the home of two Kentucky governors, the home of one governor of Missouri who uh, put the bounty on Jesse James. We have uh, home of one Supreme Court justice appointed by Lincoln. And you can go on and on talking about people and personalities from here. And then events that happened here by the Civil War. We now know that the first battle in the Civil War on Kentucky soil where lives were lost were right here, just a short distance from this building. And you just start building and you go right on up after the railroad came in the 1880s. The town was projected to grow into more of a, quote, boom town situation for its day. And and then, of course, that didn't materialize. And uh, so now, as we talk to our young people and we talk about our area, especially the way times look right now with the economy and all, what we really have is a treasure in history right here. In the words of Mr. Mike Mills, when everything runs out, Barberville will always have its heritage to fall back on. A heritage that is significant to the history and the state of Kentucky. A heritage unlike any other.